I know I called you initially on this whole thing, but what, what over the course of time in uh, conversations about this, have you found appealing about Bring Me the News? Well, first of all, it's new. Uh, and I've always been interested in things new. Uh, I was interested in video when we were shooting on film. Uh, I bought a VHS machine when there was only one company making them. They cost $1,400. <laughs> I like new things, and this is just not new. Bring me the news is just not new. It is the future. It is the way that news is going to be delivered, both on uh, radio, uh, in, in print, in uh, broadcast television, uh, and in digital, narrowcast. It's the way it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have gray hair, but that doesn't make me old. I'm always interested in the new thing. And your track record is just amazing that you're supplanting all of the mature industries that have been delivering news all along. That's a train I'd like to get on. And so I didn't think about getting uh, fully back into the business until I realized what I miss most. And it wasn't just the news, which I did miss desperately, being able to stay on top of. And that's why I tried to keep my fingers in reporting but what I missed most of all was talking to the audience. I'm a broadcaster. I'm not a writer. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to think about the people that you're communicating with um, when you're sitting down at a keyboard. But when you're talking to them, that is a very special relationship. So when this opportunity came along, that it was brand new, that it was the best in the business, and that it was an opportunity to do journalism and talk to the people, Talk to human beings, mm -hmm. and especially people in, in smaller areas. That really excited me because I'm a kid from a town of 108 people, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. we were looked over. <laughs> we didn't count. This is a way of making those people count. They're being listened to. Tell me uh, what has surprised you most coming to terms and understanding kind of what this operation is. What, what, what did you not know that just made you go, well, you know, holy smokes. What surprised me, first of all, was how large and professional it was and is. Uh, I had no idea. I thought, and I think you can get away with it, uh, uh, podcasts are all over the place. Anybody with a computer and a microphone can put up a podcast and you could do it out of a room and you could scan newspapers and write up headlines and, and you could probably pass yourself off pretty well as a, as a reporter. Uh, cut that very deep and uh, you get to the, the point that there's nothing behind it. It's empty. But what you've done is built this incredible team, not only of people with extreme knowledge of the technology, but also the knowledge of the future, which is to me the most exciting part. What's next? You're not sitting still. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, you were the one who had, had told me that it was Lou Holtz who said that you're standing still, you're moving backwards. Mm -hmm. I don't think Rick, Rick Capcella is ever moving backwards, never standing still, always moving forward. You know, I did, we, we talked about the fact that in this newsroom, you know, even before uh, bringing you on, I mean, we're talking about a group of, you know, a dozen journalists and additional support staff here, but a dozen journalists with a cumulative 170 years in this marketplace. And I double that you by just simply coming on. <laughs> You stole my line. <laughs> that's easy, you know. That's an easy double. We're over 300 for sure right now. Um, but that that um, you know that's one of the things that I've continued uh, continually been amazed about is the ability to track to attract talent. Now, obviously, I think you know bringing you in on top of the base that we've got here is is about bar setting even higher, and that kind of professionalism is important. Uh, in, in this atmosphere, it's the kind of thing, you know, I've thought about putting a bar uh, along the top of the ceiling up here and then identifying it with a label. The bar is up here. Uh, that's how it feels, you know, in the space uh, day to day. But, but in the conversations with you, I got to say, one of the things that impressed me the most was beyond the fact of, you know, your uh, willingness to come in and, and, and work with us on the broadcast side, where you, of course, got just an immense amount of experience. The interest, the repeatedly stated interest in being on top of the next evolution of journalism and specifically mentoring 
um, that kind of surprised me, frankly. I mean, that level of want to be in, want to play, you know, want to advance. Uh, it's, it's, it's honorable, and uh, it was a very cool thing to see. One of the things that has uh, me troubled from time to time in the new generation of the development of this kind of news, and I, I see it all the time when I uh, go through the internet and, and I'm trying to pick out things of interest, is that in the rush toward technology, sometimes journalism gets left behind. You've managed to preserve journalism, big J journalism, uh, at this level. And what I'd like to be able to do, because I bring that 45 years of what it requires to be a, a journalist, not just a person with a microphone, not just somebody who runs out on the street and tries to gather some news, but there are deep, thick rules about how we should approach our jobs. And I don't ever want that lost as this blossoms and becomes, I think, the method of delivering news to people that we don't lose journalism in the process, in our rush to be speedy and uh, electronic and accessible, that there still is an underpinning of that that contract with the people that you can trust what's being said. Yes. You know, some friends of mine in the community here, when we were launching this thing, I was talking to them about, you know, the slings and arrows that would be thrown and all of that kind of stuff, and just thinking through, you know, defenses, proactive measures, and uh, uh, Kathy Thunheim is one mm -hmm. who said to me early on in this thing, you know, the important thing for the public to understand when so many uh, verticals of change are occurring all around them, when they see journalism changing the way it is in this market today, the important thing for them to know is that the people driving the vehicle into the next zone, if you will, into the, the, the future play out of journalism, the people in that spot are in fact journalists. And if, if they know that, and it's journalists that they know, and it's journalists that they trust, it's going to be easier to have the community more broadly adapt to what's happening in the space. We have a phrase in journalism you know well, but <clears throat> I like to think uh, of it in terms of my own, uh, my own desires and, and the own, my own rule that uh, when you lay it down, it better stay there. Uh, it doesn't get up and walk away or change shape. Uh, that, that, that fact that you just reported uh, is a fact. And it can't be changed. It can be uh, argued with, and, and people can have other opinions about it, but the fact is unassailable. And uh, it is not something that is malleable. And so when I say that uh, your bring me the news puts down the fact, it can't be tampered with. Uh, people can argue with it, they can have different political views about the fact, but they can't say your facts are wrong. And in journalism, one of the things that I taught at the University of St. Thomas is you've got only one job in journalism, and that's to get it right. If you get it wrong, you shouldn't be in journalism. Mm -hmm. Get it right. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to be, if, if I have that ability and if anyone uh, is willing to listen, I'd like to be always that presence uh, in the newsroom that says, that's the standard. Get it right. Yeah.